Hey there, welcome back to Coding at Home with the Code Hub. After the good long weekend, well, longish, um, I'm here with a special guest star again. We're going to talk through, we're going to do a little live debugging session. So we're still on logical operators and conditional coding. And this is kind of the equivalent to a trapeze artist practicing without a net for the first time. We're going to go into some code that, that Anya wrote here and um, try to walk through why it didn't work. Because this happens all the time. We have code that doesn't work all the time. So let's transition us over here to the the code. So this is the, if you remember, this is the playground that we were playing with. It's learn to code one. We are in the chapter logical operators and we're on the using the not operator, which is a bit of a, a mind meld. You may have some difficulty with this one because it's sort of flipping your logic on its head a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through this code here. If you remember, this is the puzzle where we try to solve um, the case where blue would, there wouldn't be a gem when there were stairs appearing. And gem was, or blue was supposed to take a left, go down the stairs, pick up the gem, come back up, and then continue on collecting the gems. So do you want to walk me through what you were thinking here? Um, yeah, well, this originally said for one and four. Hmm. And, um, this one here, okay. Yeah, so I tried that, but it didn't work. So then I just changed it to eight because I was like, why not? Mm -hmm. And then um, it was usually on the one where the stairs at the very end. Hmm. So I thought, oh, maybe I should just try to figure out how to do that. And... I was way behind you because <laughs> my iPad was super laggy. So, mm -hmm. um, so I was like, okay, I'll just try to finish this one as fast as possible. Mm. And um, I, I didn't exactly know what I was doing. Yeah, fair enough. I just. Okay, well, we we'll run. Let's run it and step through the code and find out what what's happening. So if we step through my code. We'll get this stuff regenerated over here. Eventually. <laughs> Even poor Blue's getting bored. I had to step through my code a lot because hmm. there were bugs. Yeah. Yeah, and it was a good idea to try to change the loop. That was a good idea. That's one of the tools that we have at our disposal. You know, another tool is to change the conditions we're using. Because I can see here that you used... If is on gem, you were collecting the gem. That's a smart thing to do. And then you had the if not is on gem, turn left and move forward. So you would turn left, move forward. And then you check again down here if you're on a gem and you collect the gem again. And then it would start the cycle. Again. And then it would start the cycle again. All right. So let's see. We're kind of, we're sort of stuck here. Let's try backing out and then coming back in. That might just make it worse. <laughs> that might make it worse. So we're slowly waiting for using the not operator to come back up. <laughs> oh, anytime. You know what? Tell you what. Let's close out of this. Let's open it back up again. Not working now. Nope. Now it's decided. No, do you know what? I don't want to do any of that stuff. So let's try opening up Swift Playgrounds again. All we did was double click the home button and then swipe up on the screen to kill the application and then restart it. Sometimes you get stuck like that and you have to you have to restart. It's really handy doing that. Hmm. So we'll load this again. And these live debugging sessions can be a little bit intimidating because I know even professional developers might feel like they're being attacked and we're just trying to solve a problem. That's all we're doing in this case. It's not a judgment on anybody. It's just looking through code and it's kind of seeing, all right, well, this is what the machine understands what it's supposed to do out of all of this. Uh, let's, let's try to figure out where it went wrong. All right. So we're back on using the not operator. Here we go. We're going to try that again. There's blue. We're going to try stepping through my code. No, no, it changed. Well, it'll regenerate anyway, so uh, we yeah. wait for that uh, to regenerate. Uh, 
And what I would do is if I got stuck like this and I was started to add new items in there like this for one to eight, maybe I might say, do you know what? Let me, let me break it way back down and just try to figure out, try to walk through in my head what it is this is meant to do. And this Swift Playground is not going to cooperate today. Here, let me just grab this one just in case we need to switch. We are not having a lot of luck with that. So let's... The internet hasn't been great all day. Hmm. So maybe... Maybe there's just a problem. This is very exciting. This is like the paint drying episode. <laughs> like, there we go. We're waiting for bite. No, that's... Is... No, we're waiting for yours to uh, show up on there. And this isn't working out. <laughs> yeah, boy, this is not working well at all. Here, let's try switching one more time. Going back to that not operator. We're going to load that puzzle again. We'll just try running it. To We're going to be works. here forever. <laughs> Helps if you cheer on your tools sometimes. <laughs> we are not having a lot of luck with our debugging here, guys. <clears throat> Let's try opening up your playground. The sun is shining. Maybe that's still what it's doing. It's telling us, you know what? Get outside. All right, so we're opening up Debug Learn to Code again. Oh. I realize this is that. very exciting. This is sometimes what happens in programming. You wait a long time for your tools. I need a nap or something. <laughs> sometimes it's best to take a nap. <laughs> Let's see if I have one locally over here. Nope. All right. Well, um, hmm. Maybe do you want to try bringing? Do you want to try getting getting your iPad that you were working on, and yeah. we'll see if we can add that one on here? Might not work any better, but. All right. So while while Lonnie's going to get that, and while we wait for that to reload, let's go back to the book. This is the the chapter that we're in. Is this logical logical operators chapter? Um, we've gone through all of these pages at kind of ad nauseum, and we've also gone through these walkthroughs here that tell you how to get through each one of the pages. As you can see here, we've got other hints for how to solve the puzzles. So you might even, if you get stuck, uh, like we got stuck on this particular one, you might go back and say, all right, well, how do I, how does this explain it? Maybe that'll help me understand what it is I need to do to solve this particular puzzle. Let's go back to Playgrounds and see if we're having any more luck. Here, I'll take that one over here. So here, we're just going to add this here. We're going to add on his iPad to our All right. Well, that's not what that's not what I want here. We'll turn that one off. Sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's not what I want. All right. Tell you what. Let's go back to our.
All right, this isn't working out so well because I my iPad's kind of hold. Okay, let's try that all over again. We're bringing this guy back online. Okay, and we're back here. Let's try opening up our debug one last time and see if we can't survive this. Okay, here's our not operator. Let's take a look at this. Let's try running my code. If it doesn't run this time, we can just walk through it anyway and maybe try to come up with a, a better solution. There, let's see. All right, tell you what, so we're gonna, that's not working out, Blue is not, not cooperating with us, so let's, let's take a look at this here. So if we were to recreate that code here, what you've got is, you move forward, you did it one in eight times, you move forward, here, if you stick with me here, Hans, so what yeah. you did was you, you moved forward, right? No, bring that code back up. Oh, sorry. And then you said, if is on gem. Gem, and then what did you do? You collected the gem, right? Uh, yeah, if is on gem, collect gem. But then I have to make sure to check afterwards. That's what I realized. That's where I realized I yes. went wrong. I forgot to add if is not on gem. So then you move forward after you collected the gem, huh? Yeah, but I probably should have. And then you did if checked for not. If not is on gem, and then if it's on gem. Is on gem. Okay, and then and then what did you do when you did not is on gem? You did turn left. Move forward. And then move forward. Okay, great. And then what did you do? Then you did the last check. You said if is on gem. Collect gem. But I should have done the if is not on gem. I should have brought that up above the second move forward. Okay. Because. Yeah, and we can try that out. All right, so this is our code that looks just like your code over there except we're only doing it four times let's change that to eight all right let's try running my code here I'm a little worried that there's no puzzle showing up but oh it always shows up after a little while all right should sometimes you need to Boy, this is not our day with Swift Playgrounds. This is not great. Sometimes what I have to do is hmm. I have to restart my iPad. Yeah, I think we're at that stage. Here, we'll try relaunching that playground. All right, here we go. Now we've got the puzzle. We've got Hopper instead of Byte. Same code though. No, Let's try running bite. my code. You have uh, blue there, sorry. I know, but you said Hopper instead right. of. All right, there we go. So we collect the gem, and we saw that we weren't on a gem, and we move forward, right? Oh, now we're now we're starting to go wrong. We turn left. 
Okay, so let's try walking through this and see what happens. So let's stop it. We know that that's, that's, there's a bug there. Let's step through this and watch what happens. So we can of... see we move forward first. That's good. If we're on a gem, we move forward again. Okay, so right away we have a bug. So if we saw that, if we what we do is we fall into is on gem. And then we skipped over it because we weren't on a gem and then we move forward right away. The problem is it's set up so that if the stairs are on the very last um, square there, mm. then you'll collect all the gems. Because for some reason, it was stuck on the very last square the whole time. Okay, okay, cool. Let's take a look at that on with blue, the way you had it set up exactly. All right. <clears throat> So there, you did. You solved the puzzle. You're right. If it's on the last square, it does solve the puzzle. Because what we do is we wind up in this loop. If we walk through, if we stop Byte, because Byte's going, or Blue's going crazy. Um, Blue's going to move forward the first time. What we want to do is, in this loop, is we want to check. And I like your thinking. We could do this. If is on gem, collect the gem. But we also want to think about, we also want to test and see if we're not on a gem. And go left. Right before we move forward again, because what we'll do here is we'll say move forward. If we're on gem, we'll collect it. Great, and then we'll move forward. That's perfect. But where we run into trouble is we if, if we're here, and we say, oh, we're not on a gem. Turn left, move forward. That's a great. That's perfect here. Right. Mm -hmm. So will we actually try move trying this moving this move forward inside here? Yeah. Let's try. I'll tap on here and drag it down. Let's try running that and see what happens. Because now we won't move forward if we're not on a gym. Because we saw here when the stairs weren't here. Uh, yeah, that actually does make sense. Right? So let's try running that. Well, and all that's going to do is give me one run. Is that it? All right, let's try going back over to the other one and let's edit on this one then because this is not, that iPad is just not working today. All right, so here, let's bring this guy back on. So what we just talked about was moving this over. So now we're just going to run my code. So a bike goes back to the beginning. <laughs> collects a gem, cool, because we're on a gem, so we're moving forward. Okay, now we're not on a gem, so we turn left, we move forward once. It worked. Oh, that's cool, that worked. Now there's a bit extra that we're doing here. Yeah, there are too many steps. In so it. let's try rerunning this, and so we solved it, but let's see if we can solve it when it shows up in another position. Well, so, I don't think you'd get that last gem, you know? You don't think we'll get the last gem? No. So we're on a gem, we've collected it. Now we're not on a gem, so we should turn left and move forward. But he's okay. just going to keep turning left. Going in a little square. Okay, you're right. Yep. So he's not... we're not on a gem and then we're moving forward too many times. So if we stop and think about this, where we might want to look is, so we have, is on gem, collect the gem. I think that that's fair. We could leave that in there. Maybe let's take out the move forward. I like this check for is on gem, is not on gem. So, but what do you want to do when it's not on the gem? Well, how do we want to, because there's normally the, the gem is down here. Yeah. So what do we have to do? If, if we're not on a gem, what do we do? Um, I think what you would do is, at the very end of all this code, mm -hmm. you would say, okay, let's say you went down to the, to the bottom of these steps. Okay, so how many so, steps would that be? Because you have us turn left, you have us move forward. Do we need to add another line there? Um, no, it'd be like at the very end here. Okay. So then you would... Like after, not inside, if is on gem. 
No, it won't but be after, in there. Yeah. yeah. So then you would do, after that, if you're not on a gym, then you... Um, then you probably would turn around and then go up the steps again. Okay, after you know? we've collected the gem. Yeah. Okay. So, but you don't need to have it inside the loop if you just edit that so it's the perfect amount of steps. So what, four steps again? Maybe, yeah. Okay. Might work. Yeah, because we have four tiles here. One, two, three, four that we're going through. So four times should do it. So we're going to move forward because we start off on this one. Now the next one, what we're going to do is land on here for the first pass of the loop and say, hey, are we on a gem? It'll say, is on gem. It'll collect the gem. That's cool, right? Yeah. And then we kind of just want it to move forward, right? Yeah. So then we would say, okay, actually don't do this. So let's, this is what I would do. I would actually delete all of this code and just try to solve, solve it piece by piece again. I would say, okay, cool. So we solved that one if there's a gem on it. Yeah. And we've moved forward. So that's that's good. Yeah. What happens, though, if there's not a gem on it? If there's not a gem? Yeah. You probably turn left. Okay, yeah, turn left. So I like that. Now, the only problem is, is if we do this first, if we say is on gem and we collect the gem, then the next time we check, if we're still inside that same loop and we check again to say if n is not on gem... It'll say, oh, you're not on a gem because you just collected it. So maybe yeah. we want to do that check first, right? Yeah. So let's let's add an if statement in here. But then it's going to turn left. If we're not on a gem. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Oops, okay, lying. that makes sense. That makes yeah, a lot of sense. We want the exclamation mark and then is on gem. So first we'll test because we want to test two things. We're testing if we're on a gem. And if we're not on a gem. So in the case where we're not on a gem, what do we do? How do we get down there? We just turn left, like you said. And move forward. Move forward. How many times do we move forward? Just once. Are you sure about that? Because if we look here, if we move forward once, we're at the top of the stairs. Twice. Twice. All right. So cool. Twice. And now we're underneath where the gem normally is, at the bottom of the stairs. So then you collect gem. All right. So then we collect the gem. And then now, if we left it there, we would check to see if we're on a gem. It would say no. And then it would get down here, and it would go back to the top and move forward again. But the problem is, we would be here facing into the sea. Yeah. We're so what do we need to do inside here, probably, right? How would we get back up to you the top of the to steps? You need to turn left. Turn left. All right, so turn left. And then turn left again. Turn left again. And then what? And then you move forward twice. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, because we're, yeah, just to get back up to the top of the steps. And then you turn left. So you were facing towards the gems. Okay, turn left again. So that we do all of that if we're on a gem, or if we're not on a gem, sorry. Yeah. And then we say, hey, if we're on a gem, we'll collect the gem. Yeah. That's cool. Will we try running it? Yeah. All right, let's try running it. Okay. Oh, cool. We're on the is not on gem condition. We just collected our gem. We're turning left. We're coming back up. Yay. Perfect. That's perfect code right there. Because every time we, we said, hey, if we're not on a gem, we would run all this code in here. And if we were, and then afterwards we'd check, hey, are you on a gem? And then we would collect the gem. So that's yeah. perfect. That, that works perfect. So that was good. It, and, you know, sometimes you'll monkey around with the numbers of loops that you're doing and everything. Um, but that was good. That was good. Yeah. So these are useful to do, these little... Um, these little sessions where you debug with somebody else because it helps to talk through the problem and maybe they see something that you haven't seen. Um, yeah, you definitely, like, I wouldn't have thought about it. Oh, I have to go through it step by step. 
Yeah, so this it's great. Like this is actually a good thing. It's very hard to do as a as a programmer sometimes to sit down with someone else and and explain things to them. But it actually makes you a better programmer in the end, I think. So um, that was good. Thanks, Sonia. Thank you for that. I'm gonna go downstairs and continue. All right. Okay, cool. So the last thing we're gonna do today, we're actually gonna finish up pretty pretty soon here, is we are gonna walk through the last bit of practice with logical operators. So let's see how this guy's looking now. All right, so we're gonna go transition back over to the other iPad and hopefully this works out better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off to get more playgrounds. So I'm, I'm in Swift Playgrounds again, and I'm going off to the more playgrounds at the bottom of the, the screen. So I'm going to go to the Code Hub's Swift Playgrounds. And what I want to do is I want to get this Code Hub Answers Playground. You might already have this one. If you do, you, we can definitely use that one. Uh, because what we're going to do is we're going to exercise our conditional coding and logical operators and build a quiz to hand off to somebody. So hand, you can hand it off to your parents, you can hand it off to your kids, you can hand it off to your brothers or sisters, um, anybody. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna download one of those Code Hub answers. I'm gonna open it up. Now, what I'm gonna do in here is I have, have my quiz. I'm actually just gonna use the very first page so if you look up here, it's called text. And we have a few different types in here. We have conditionals, we have types, we have a quiz, quiz with conditions. Conditionals just shows us a little bit about this ask for bool option that we have. And you can see that we have a condition here. If does want to know the answer, then we show a bit of text on the screen. So what I'm gonna do is go back to text. And I'm good. This is a good start to my quiz. So I want to ask someone their name and I get a hold of their name. And then what I want to do is I want to ask them a few questions like any one of those buzz, Buzzfeed quizzes you might've seen or, or anything like that. And we're going to build an answer based on what the user has, has entered. So let's see, we're going to create a variable, uh, called actually first we'll ask the question, right? So let's see, our first question will be, We'll say show, and we'll pick this down here for string. And let's see, what will we ask? We'll ask, um, now we're just gonna stick to yes or no questions because that's what we've been practicing with. Um, you, if you wanna get fancier, there's examples in this playground of how to check on answers, if they're numbers, if they're greater than or less than a certain number, or if they're equal to a certain number. But what we're gonna do is stick to, to Booleans, right? So true or false, yes or no. Um, so let's see, do you like pizza? How about, we'll start with that. All right, and then, so we do our show where that's the question that we're gonna ask the, the quiz taker. And then we're gonna create a variable to store their answer. So, and I'll call it likes pizza. And then I'll say, I'll get the equal sign. So the equal sign is over the D. So then we'll call the function ask. So we'll start typing A, S to shorten it down. And we're gonna ask for bool. Okay, so let's try running that. Uh, and actually here, let's, let's then print out the answer. So if likes pizza, now I can do a my parentheses to have the block that's gonna get executed in there for if they like pizza, show, and I'll hit this one here. And then I can type in my response to them saying if they, they like pizza. So I'll do quotation mark, me, too. 
and then I'll close the quotation marks there. So let's try running that just to try out my quiz. Okay, what is my name? I can hit submit. Do I like pizza? Now it's just a switch. So if I switch it on, it's true. If I switch it off, it's false. So let me hit true, I'll hit submit. And then it prints out me too. Now if I hit my, run my code again, and I say, Matt, do I like pizza? And I turn it off and I submit it, nothing else gets printed because that condition wasn't true. So, so far, so good, right? So we've, what we've done is we've, this is our question where we show our question. Then we have a variable called likes pizza. And the value of that is going to be whatever the user toggles over here with that switch. When we use this ask for bool function. And you can even see here, there's an F for false. And then what we do is we take that Boolean variable and we say, okay, well, if likes pizza is true, then we're going to print show me too. And then otherwise we're not going to do anything. Now let's try using a conditional operator and then I'll leave you guys to it to kind of work through this for the rest of the day. All right. So we asked our question show, do you like pizza? We got the answer there in this likes pizza variable. So now let's show something else. So go down to the autocomplete bar and drag way over to the right. I'm going to say show. And I picked the string because I want to, have some text shown to the user. So I'm going to hit this button, the ABC button. And let's ask if they like, maybe this is a food centered quiz. So do you like pizza or do you like um, ice cream? Okay. So then we'll create a variable to hold their answer for that. And we'll call it likes ice cream. And you can see this is a good example of our camel case here with our lowercase L to start it out, capital I to start out the word ice, and then capital C to start out the word cream. And then we have to do equals. Remember that's over the D key. And then we're going to do ask for bool. Because this is a handy way for us to get back a true or false value from our user. Okay, so now now that we have now we, that we have the answer for do they like ice cream, what we can do is we can say, well, I like both as well. So in the quiz, when I tap at the end of if likes pizza for my condition, it gives me a few options here. Now the ones that we learned about were these two in particular, the double ampersand and the double pipe. So I could say if they like pizza and they like ice cream, I could say me too. Um, I could say if they like one or the other, I could say me, me too as well. But maybe I want to make sure that we both like pizza and ice cream. So likes ice cream shows up in my autocomplete bar. So I'm going to tap on that. Now, what if they don't like either? What if they don't like pizza and they don't like ice cream? Well, let's, let's write another condition. I'm going to use now. I, they, I, it sounds like they're a monster if they don't like pizza and they don't like ice cream. Maybe they're lactose intolerant and they can't stomach them, but let's, let's use the not operator to, to react to someone not liking pizza and ice cream. So let's use the not. We'll start typing in likes and we can say likes pizza. Maybe we'll just say that's a real shame. So show we'll use the string.
That's a real shame. So run my code. And now what I'd love to see uh, you work on is a quiz for yourself where, you know, you take a subject that's near and dear to your heart. Maybe it's music, maybe it's, it's food, maybe it's your favorite book. And you can ask people simple questions like this, like, do you like a specific thing? And, and then you can build conditions like this to, to tailor the response to that, that user. Okay, here we go. So name, we'll hit submit. Do you like pizza? Well, I'll say no to that. And I'll say yes to ice cream. So it says that's a real shame if I don't like pizza, but it didn't show me this one because I didn't like pizza and ice cream. I just liked ice cream. So this is something worth, um, playing around with what I might do is uh, build a little quiz for you to you take yourself at home and uh, maybe I'll post up the, the code to it so you can take the quiz at home and see what you come up with. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow where we're going to start working on a different kind of loop. So just like we used a for loop today when we were debugging on his code eventually, um, we're going to see a different type of loop that we can use that might might be useful in different situations. All right, hope you, you were able to follow along at home. Um, if not, the video will be posted online in all of its stuttery glory. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow.